Hello everyone, my name is Protesilaos, also known as Prot. In this video I want to talk to you about the basics of a mode inside of GNU Emacs that allows you to edit the contents of a directory listing. The, this mode is called, its proper name is Directory Editor, which is abbreviated as DIRED. At least that's how I pronounce it, in the same way we use words like tired, mired, wired, etc. So the, what I will be doing now is that I will switch to my Emacs window here uh, to the monitor on my right and I will activate screen key. So from now on, or any key press that I input will appear on the bottom part of the screen uh, for you to be able to follow along uh, the steps that I am uh, doing. Let's get started right away. The way you uh, bring up a diode buffer uh, in uh, Emacs, the default, is control X and the letter D. A prompt will uh, pop up asking you for the directory you want to gain access to. Let's go to the directory that includes the Emacs configurations, the default directory, and let's increase the font size a bit. We are inside of a diode buffer and we see at the very top of the listing here is the file system path to where we are. So it's my home directory and then .emacs.d. I have made some tweaks to the way Diet lists items uh, in order to have all the um, directories appear at the top and then the regular files below them. I prefer this to the standard uh, alphabetical sort. But anyhow, uh, don't worry too much about how things look. Yours might uh, look a bit different, but these are very easy to configure. Let's go to the basics of Diet. The, may, the way you move around in a diode buffer is the same uh, as with the rest of the Emacs uh, environment. So, for example, Control M moves you to the next line, Control P to the previous line, Control A to the beginning of the line, Control E to the end of the line. You move to the end of the buffer by pressing meta and the right uh, angled bracket or meta and the left angled bracket to move back to the top. Uh, you can pass a numeric argument and then a motion. For example, uh, this uh, control 5 and then control N takes you five items uh, down and things like that, whatever you would expect. The same applies for uh, searches. You can search for an item using control S or you can do a reverse search using control R. And these are the basic motions. However, because this is a special uh, buffer, you can also move up and down the listings using just the letter N or the letter P. So N moves you to the next item, P to the previous item in the list. Very well. So let's proceed to the basic operations inside of a diode buffer. You can delete files, you can copy files, you can rename files, and you can create uh, new directories. So let's uh, start by uh, copying a file. Let's come to this file over here and let's copy it, make a copy of it. The way you copy a file is by pressing the capital C. So by pressing capital C, a prompt will appear at the bottom part of the screen. I believe this area here is called the mini buffer, but I am new to Emacs, so I might be getting the terminology wrong from time to time. So here at the prompt, you are asked about the name of the new file you want to create by copying uh, the selected item. So let's call it uh, copied, copied.l and we press the return key, so enter and the new file has been created. We see that it's uh, on its line um, the capital C has been uh, appended, has been prepended, sorry, uh, informing us that this is a created item, the, the product of a copy uh, operation. Very well, let's say now that we want to rename this file. The way you rename files is by pressing capital R. And again, the prompt uh, will appear asking us again uh, for how we want to rename it. Let's call it renamed.l. We press the return key and we see that it, is, has been, it has been renamed. Very good. Now let's say that we want to delete it. Uh, we have two options here. Either we can press the letter D, so lowercase d, which actually marks it for deletion in order to um, delete it at a later point when we want to, and then you can move around and uh, proceed to delete more items, for example, or you can undelete here, unmark it from deletion, or you can press capital D, 
which performs a deletion uh, without uh, marking it. So capital D will ask you directly if you want to send it to the system trash. For now, I will say no, and let's go with the standard deletion, which is where you mark it for deletion with the lowercase d. And the way you confirm uh, the mark for deletion is by pressing the letter X, so expunge. And then you are asked again if you want to send it to the trash. Let's do just that. Very well. Let's now create a new directory. And the way you do that is by pressing the plus sign. So the prompt will pop up. Uh, the, the present directory is already pre-selected and we can uh, input the name of the new directory right here. Let's call it new directory. We see that it has been created and it's exactly where we want it to be, inside of the present listing. Let's enter the new directory by pressing the return key and let's increase the font size again a bit. We see that it is empty. The way you move uh, to the parent of the present working directory is by pressing the caret sign. The caret sign is on US QWERTY layouts. Is, uh, you input it by pressing shift and the number six, which is above uh, the letters T and Y. So we are back to the listing we were earlier. Now let's come again to the file here and let's uh, make a new copy and let's call it newcopy.l. Newcopy.l has been created. And let's now say that we want to move this file inside of the new directory. How would we do that? Uh, if you are familiar with uh, the standard Unix uh, tools, so the, how you would uh, work inside of a terminal emulator, the way you rename a win, um, an item is the same uh, is uh, performed by the um, program called MV. So you are actually moving the old file name to the location of a new file name. And this is actually what is happening in Dyered as well. So you can actually rename the present file, which is the same as moving it. So let's rename it. So let's take new copy.l and rename it as new directory and then tab completion, new directory forward slash, and let's hit the return key. So what we should get is this file should actually be removed, uh, be, sorry, be moved uh, to the new directory without actually being renamed. Let's see what happened. We see it is exactly what we were expecting to see. Very good. Let's go back to the parent directory. And now let me show you something else. Let's uh, open a new buffer containing eShell. eShell is, um, is a shell, is a command line interpreter uh, written in Emacs Lisp. Uh, command line inter uh, shell is the same as uh, bash or Z shell or fish and stuff like that. So very basically it's a way of uh, interacting here in an interactive shell. What I want to show you now is that Say that while you are in a diet buffer, some things in the listing have changed. So let's say, for example, a new file has been created uh, externally. We see that it has been created here. And now let's go back to the directory where we were before. We see that the new file that we created does not appear here on the listing. So in order to refresh the diet buffer, you have to press the letter G. We do just that. And what the refresh does, it, it lists the new item that we created externally, but it also um, refreshes the listing, effectively confirming all the kind of actions you did, confirm, confirming them in terms of uh, visuals, that is. So the new directory uh, is grouped together with the other directories. Very well, let's see, everything is here. Yeah, it is where we have it. Now let's say that we want to delete the directory. Again, you can use lowercase d or uppercase d. Now I will just use uppercase d and it is asking me if I want to send it to the trash. I say yes, but because this is a directory which includes other items, the deletion will be a recursive deletion, which means uh, the item and all of its contents uh, therefore, it asks you to confirm the action. I say yes, and it is gone. 
uh, I believe it is, a, is, it is a sane default to ask uh, for a recursive deletion because uh, this can be very destructive and you don't want to mess around with things. Very well. And let's actually, oh sorry, uh, because I was using Vim, sometimes I'm a bit clumsy, I'm still used to the Vim keys, but this will improve over time. Let's actually delete also this new thing here. And we are back to where we were. And let's refresh the listing. Very well. What else can we do here? Let's um, now uh, use a regular expression in order to mark the items that are matched by the search terms. So the way you do a regular expression is by pressing a regular expression inside of Dyer, that is, for the purposes of marking. You press um, the, sorry, you press the percentage sign and then the letter M. And in the mini buffer area, a prompt will come up asking you for the terms of the regular expression. Let's actually search for all the files whose uh, ending is .el. We see that all the files .el have been marked. And the way you know that an item has been marked is by the asterisk sign that is appended to each uh, listing, to each item. Very well. What can we do with these marked items? We can uh, do exactly what we did in the single items before. So copy them or delete them and things like that. Let's copy them. We have a copy of these. Now, actually, before we copy them, let's create a new directory. And let's call it new dir. We have a new directory. And now let's move all the copied items to that new directory. Le Sorry, let's move, let's copy all the marked items inside of the new directory. So we go to the new directory and we press return. We see copy 12 files uh, below. The way you unmark tagged items is marked items, that is, is if you go over an item and you press the letter U, it will uh, unmark it. Or uh, instead of doing it one item at a time, you can press capital U and all the marks have been cleared. Now let's go inside of the new dir where we have all the copied files. Let's increase the font size a bit. We see that all the files are here. Very well. Now let's perform another uh, regular expression and uh, this time match all the items whose name starts with MO. We see that uh, all the modus uh, items here have been uh, marked. What you can do when you have marked uh, items, you can toggle the mark. So what this means is that it will reverse uh, the matching uh, terms. So instead of uh, matching all the items whose name starts with MO, it matches all the items whose name does not start with MO. And this is very convenient. Anyhow, let's, uh, let's now perform a deletion on uh, the items that we have matched. We press capital D, it asks us if we want to send them to the trash. Yes, please, they are gone. This is great, this is very good. Let's go back. Okay, here we are, let's refresh the listings. And we have this. So these are, uh, already we can see that these are the basics you can do inside of the of a diode buffer. And uh, these on their own are very powerful. But you can do more. And of course, I am a beginner, so I am still learning. So I will show you what I have now, which is uh, which combines uh, Dyard with some of the packages I have. First, what we want to do is make the current Dyard uh, buffer writable. By default, Dyard is not writable. So you can perform all the actions here, but you cannot actually uh, type the same way you would type in an ordinary Emacs uh, buffer. So in order to make the diet uh, writable, you have to press Control X, Control Q. And in case you know, Control X, Control Q is uh, the command you have to pass if you want to input uh, a literal um, uh, item. So for example, a line break, you have to press Control X, Control Q, and then Control L, uh, a page break, not a line break. Or you can do Control X, Control Q, and then Tab, to insert a literal tab and things like that. So now we have a writable uh, 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 diard buffer and we can see here that the, it is an editable diard. And below we have 
press Control C, Control C when finished, or Control C and escape to abort the changes. So we are inside the writable buffer. So this is the same, uh, the same as writing in any kind of file. So for example, if you want to rename things, instead of hitting R and then renaming, you can just uh, type. So let's say I have this and I want to have it renamed. Let's confirm the action. We are back to standard diode. We see here it's no longer editable. And we see that this has been renamed. Very good. Let's go back to the editable uh, diode buffer. We can see that it is editable. And now let's do something else, something fancier. Let's use a package I have which um, visualizes regular expressions. And let's go and search for all the files that end in .l. We see this. And let's say you want to uh, replace .l with uh, .org. You see here the visualization. It is telling you what, is, what it is going to do. We do just that. And we have now renamed all the files in the same way you would uh, in an ordinary Emacs buffer. And we confirm the action and all these files have been renamed by writing them instead of using the rename operation of uh, Dyard. What else can we do? Let's go back and uh, make this uh, buffer, sorry, uh, let me, let's make this uh, editable. I pressed the wrong, the wrong uh, key chord. And now let's uh, use uh, multiple, uh, let's mark using uh, multiple cursors. So we press Control C and M, and this again asks us for a regular expression. Let's uh, mark all the items that's, no, let's actually do the same. Let's mark all the items that end with org. Sorry, I have to be at the beginning of the buffer for this to work. Let's do this again. Let's uh, mark all the items that start with org. And what this does is, if you notice, there are multiple cursors here. And what you can do with multiple cursors is the same thing you can do with a single cursor. So you, you can delete what you have here. You can delete the match, standard things, and you can just write things. And when you feel like it, you confirm the actions and you have renamed all the items this way. I believe this is a, a very powerful, a fantastic way of uh, um, managing files. It is a, a very, a very powerful uh, tool and I am barely scratching the surface. I am, I have been using Dyard now for like, what, two or three days and stuff like that. And I have not even gotten into some of the more advanced uh, operations that you can do with it. But if you search online and read the various uh, help manuals and the, the documentation, you will see that there is a lot that you can do with it. Um, just to open my uh, to-do list uh, for Emacs, uh, where I have um, a link, for example, this thing here. Let's open this. I have configured it to open links inside of the Emacs web browser. Of course, Emacs has a web browser. What do you think? This is not a text editor. And, uh, <laughs> and here we can see, let's, um, let's come a bit further below. We can see some of the more things that you can do with Dyard. And this is like an entire list of stuff that you can do with it. It's uh, mind boggling to say the list, the least. I believe that covers it. That's all for now, folks. I am uh, very new to Emacs and I am already discovering some of the potential that I was seeing that I could already see before even uh, trying uh, working with this uh, program. But now I am realizing this potential, uh, a fraction of it, and I am already uh, very excited of uh, greater things uh, yet to come. Thank you very much for your attention, folks. Goodbye for now.